All right. Wow, that's loud. <laughs> wow, that's loud. It's time for church. We're going to get our hearts prepared for worship. I don't know about you, but I feel extra excited and grateful to be in the house of the Lord today. I, I sense the same. I sense the same, which is good. I always love to stand as we enter in, so if you'd stand with me, that would be great. I'm going to read out of the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 2. It says this. Paul's writing to the church and he's saying this he says my goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God namely Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge And what sticks out to me here as I was reading this morning is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love. And there's something about being encouraged in heart and united in love that unlocks the mystery of God, which is Jesus Christ and him crucified. So as we enter in, can we just unite around one thing? Love for another and love for Jesus. <laughs> so Lord, we just pray for that right now as we enter in that the love of Jesus Christ, the love that sent him to the cross would flood this place. God, we do just invite your Holy Spirit to come and lead us into all truth. And we just recalibrate our hearts in this moment. We throw aside everything that happened this week, everything that went well, everything that didn't go well, everything that was disappointing, everything that was exciting. And we just throw it all aside and we recalibrate around one thing, the accomplishments of Christ. We just ask, Lord, that you'd make us a people that love well, that love well. Thank you, Jesus.
cross to die But not even death itself could hold you down He rose to rise Such an awesome God So mighty So holy So Never been anyone like you There's never been anyone
that's dipped in blood What's his name? And who is this? Clothed with a robe It's dipped in blood And what's his name? Who is this? Clothed with a robe Dipped in blood in blood What's his name? Who is this? Clothed with a robe Dipped in blood And what's his name? And he is the word of God And he is the Word of God, speak, but you pour down like rain. You're washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. So please let me stay and rest in your holiness. So word of God speak Would you pour down like rain You're washing my eyes to see Your majesty To be still and know That you're in this place Please let me stay and rest
what's his name Christ crucified Christ crucified He's enough for me. He's enough for me. Christ crucified. Christ crucified. Christ crucified. He's enough for me. Is enough for me. Yes. Christ crucified. Christ crucified. Christ crucified. He's enough for me. He's enough for me, yes he is, he's enough for me, yes, he's enough for me, no longer, he's enough for me, no longer, I'm satisfied in him, yes, he's enough for me, no longer, he's
like a stronghold that you feel like is you need freedom from just come forward but I need people spread out and I we just just stay come all the way up come all the way up and then if if we're stacking double go down the aisles and we'll just make room you know what I'm saying ushers right I just want people spread out so no one gets because I feel like the Lord's going to do some fast and furious things right now okay come all the way up all the way up he is so generous I'm overwhelmed with his generosity right now just focus on the Lord Holy Spirit we thank you you are so awesome you're so generous you're so mighty Just ask the Spirit of God that you just touch people right now. Come on, just 
lift your hands just to get ready to receive. Just worship just like you were before. Okay? We're just going to come and pray. Release healing if you need a healing in your body. I need the ushers to stay with me, okay? Such an awesome God, so sad. 
such an awesome God, so selfless and so generous, so faithful you are, so faithful you of issue reverse come on yeah let's just thank him go ahead give him a shout whatever you have to do Help us, Lord. 
Help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord. We surrender. We continually surrender. Let you have your way. Tell him you love him. but I'm I'm smoked for the rest of the service so presence of the Holy Spirit in here. Yes. Now we get to, um, in this heavy weight of his glory, we get to accept the offering. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. And um, the scripture that I want to go to before we collect the offering is, um, is in Exodus chapter 36. I'm just going to read verse 3 to 6. It says, and they received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had bought for the work of the service of the making the sanctuary. So they continued bringing to him freewill offerings every morning. Then all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came, each from the work he was doing. And they spoke to Moses saying, the people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded us to do. So Moses gave the commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. And the people were restrained from bringing, for the material they had was sufficient for all the work to be done, indeed too much. Wow, wow right? That's amazing. And, and what came to me, I think this morning, as I, um, as I was thinking about the scripture, I was like, these are people who are in a desert. And, and I'm just like, wow, in a desert, they are able to give like this. Imagine that, right? That, that, that just, this revelation came to me. It's like, you have to really trust God. I was like, if I was in the desert, to give like that, you have to trust God. <laughs> Right, and, and, and I think God just wants us to, to see that so we could get to the point where they were at, where even if we're in a desert right now, whatever, wherever you're at in your life, to trust the Lord and give in such a way without restraint, right? Give in such a way where we trust him. And I believe this giving right here, I believe that was one of the things that ignited the provision for the children of Israel in the desert. Amen? Because if you see in the desert, they lack nothing. In a desert, they lack nothing. But it started with this giving right here, I, I think, I believe, where they give with such, with uh, 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 just a joy and just without restraint, without even thinking about, hey, I'm in a desert. I might need this. I don't know how long I'm going to be in this desert. But they just gave because they trusted the Lord. And it was for the work of the Lord. And I believe God is just 
just sharing that, like uh, speaking that to us today, is to give in such a way, to trust him in such a way, we ignite a, a, a deeper level of provision that we might not even ever experience before. And I believe this is the opportunity right now where we get to really trust the Lord and just um, just really trust him and, and, and know that he'll provide for us, you know. Um, and as we get ready to collect the offering, just let that marinate in your spirit and let the Holy Spirit speak to your hearts and, and to give freely, to give with joy, right? Um, so, and I believe if, if all of us start doing that, we'll come to a place where we might be like Moses and say, hey, let's stop the people from giving because <laughs> we have more than enough, <laughs> right? And that's where, I think, I think that's the level, right? There's always different levels. That's, that's where God wants us to be to that point, amen? So as, as I'm going to pray. Father, we just thank you, Father, for just, just your provision for us, Lord God. We pray that you bless every single one here today, Lord God. That, that when they give, oh Lord God, as they give to you, Lord God, they get to ignite a deeper, just deeper realm of provision, oh Lord God, that, that they get to see you, oh Lord God, and in in, in just how, how you want to provide for us, oh Lord God, how you want us to lack nothing, Lord God, how we could, where we could be at a place where we say, you know, my God has supplied all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus, where we could, we could experience that, Father, Lord God. Thank you for everyone that is here today, Lord God, as, as you provide for them, Lord God, as they, as they really just give, Lord God, and just trust you in this way, Father, Lord God. Thank you for moving mightily in their lives, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now for announcements, is it? Yes. Oh, it's you? Okay, all right. I've got a lot of announcements. I need a helper. <laughs> okay, ready? For the first announcement. <laughs> I love how she does this. All right, we have some birthdays in the house. <laughs> I hear. So we're going to sing. Does anybody know whose birthdays it was? Tori. Victoria. And Al. Same day. Ready? Oh, wow. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Al and Tori. Happy birthday, dear Al and Tori. Tori and Al. Happy birthday to you. We love you. That was so fun. <laughs> Thank you for helping. No All right, you can stay up here. So our first, um, what are we doing? Joseph's storehouse. <laughs> just start from the top. Go down. Oh, all of a sudden, I just went blank. Miles, I'm afraid for you. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of announcements. So our na it's an announcement. That's what it is. We have Joseph's storehouse. Da -da, over there. Wednesdays. 3.30, 5.30, please fill that basket out there so we can fill the shelves so we can give out to those who are in need. And that's what we want to do. All right, Awaken House of Prayer. If you don't know, come on out to pray with us. That's Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Okay, the next one is our... Memorial service, we're doing a celebration of life for Kenny Ortiz, Susie's son. So we ask you, please come out and um, just celebrate Kenny with us. And that's going to be actually next weekend, the, what is it? The second, the Saturday. Yep, second. And that's going to be at 2 p.m. All right. Oh, fun. Revive young adults. I like to sing. Aren't those pictures cute? Okay, so we um, are switch. Miles is a young adult. He's young, and he's an adult. Um, no, <laughs> yikes. This is going really well. Um, okay, so we decided to switch. I don't know if you guys remember, but we did young adults last night, last night, last month on the third Friday. This month, we're doing it on the second Friday. So it's on the 8th. 
and it's going to be amazing. Um, you should invite everyone you know that's young, that's an adult. And honestly, seriously, last time, <laughs> you should try to lead worship and then do announcements. Um, <clears throat> last time, no, seriously, it was so powerful. Just a little testimony. We kind of stepped out in faith and did small groups, which we've never done. And um, there was just this really um, like organic, intentional, authentic, vulnerable thing going on. And we just got a lot of really good feedback um, from the people that came. And everyone was just like growing and connecting and sharing. We just had a really amazing time, prayed over each other, grew together. So I'm just believing that there's just continued um, growth in that direction. And I just feel like the Lord's really just blessing it and accelerating it. And so yeah, please pray for us. Continue to, Donna's so faithful. Yes, she, she texts all the time. What are the repair requests? And I'm so bad at responding. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's been amazing. Anything else? Let's do the next one. Okay. And then we have our Bible study. We're going to be in the second month. And of course, we're switching that date. It's March 15th at 6 p.m. Please read chapters 3 and 4. And of course, we'll be sending out a sign-up sheet for you to um, sign up for food because we love to eat before our Bible study because it's another time that we can fellowship with one another and just relax and hang out and read the Word of God, which has been amazing. The power of the blood, which comes to... Wait. Well... I'm going to just say it. We're having Bob Sorge come soon, and he'll be in May. That's not, that's not up there, but I'm just giving you a little. Yes? I was saying the power of the blood, Bible study, March 15th, and I was giving you a sneak peek advance to May, which he will be coming and joining us. All right. But we'll stay on this one because this is our next conference. It's Holy Spirit Fire Weekend with Larry Sparks. Guys, you don't want to miss the spark. Larry Spark. Fire. <laughs> fire on the altar. He's bringing the fire. We have the fire. He's bringing more fire. Imagine that. We're going to have a burn. Okay. We're going to be lit for Jesus. So, March 22nd through the 24th. Yes, you have to register. Please register. And if you're having issues, keep trying. Because you just need to keep trying. It, you'll be able to figure this out. Just keep trying. Okay. Um, I think that was it. But what? So, Kathy, did you want to share a testimony? Okay. Come on. Come on. You can do this. I'm only doing this for the Lord. Um, I came here three weeks ago, and nobody knew me. And Jim and I went before the pastor for prayer, and that man over there told me, he says, I see the angels. Do you remember what you said, Joe? What did you say? You saw them combing out the snarls in my hair. No man's going to say that to a woman that he don't know. But anyways, it, it, it's a very serious thing. I... I had issues with my hair. I mean, I would rip it out every morning trying to comb it. No chemicals. There was nothing. And it's like, Lord, this is a pain. I have to keep putting it up in a clip. And I just realized this last week, I don't have snarls anymore. <laughs> and Jim has told me my hair has come back to normal. So what a personal God. What a personal God. Yeah, he cares about everything. Your hair looks beautiful. <laughs> On? Yes, I'm on. Okay. Oh, boy. Yeah, let's just lift our hands for a minute and just worship Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Yeah, God's good. Kid. I'm overwhelmed by the generosity of Jesus tonight. If we can just tap into that. It's got nothing to do with money. It's got to do with who he is. He gave everything so that we have everything. So 
Jesus, we love you. Help me be coherent. Yeah. It's got some ring in there, guys. I don't know what's going on. Holy Spirit, we love you. We thank you. We just ask that. Just release your presence and your glory, Lord. Let everything continue to glorify you. We thank you, Lord. Come on, we thank him for loosing snarls. Come on. If we don't, no, 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 listen to me. If we don't thank him for the little things, right? Although that was a big thing, right? He wants to increase more things for us, right? So we have to rejoice in all things that he does for us. And um, we just have to be thankful if we're just, uh, just a heart of gratitude. So I'm just going to, oh boy, I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently we're starting a series that I didn't know about. <laughs> but I'm just going to give you some really, I don't want you to, I want you to just write the scripture references, don't look them up, because I'm going to burn through these, because this is just introduction, okay? I just want us to be, just talk about a few of the functions of the Holy Spirit, and this isn't even exhaustive, but I'm just going to give you this list of, there's just eight things, but I want us to just have a heart to hear what the Holy Spirit's saying. Some of us need quick refresher courses to get us like in the groove of where we are with the Holy Ghost. He's a person. I said he's a person. He's not an it. He's not something that gets us what we want. He's the person of God. So... I'm just, I will read the scriptures, but I, I just want you to write the references because I'm not going to wait for people to turn because I'm going to just fire through them, all right? Number one, he dwells in us. Yes. John 14, 17, even the spirit of truth who, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him. Why? Because he dwells with you and he shall be in you. So we need to understand, if you're a born-again believer in this room, if you're not, we'll take care of that before the end of the night. That the Holy Spirit has been given to you to dwell inside of you. That is his function. So that the spirit of truth is inside of you. So that you don't walk in error. Right? So that we don't get lost into some... Teachings that don't concern us or the kingdom, amen? amen? Number two, he teaches us all things. Teaches us all things. John 14 again, 14, 26. But the comforter who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Do I need the handheld? Okay. He will teach you all things. Who will teach you all things? Why? Because you're being awesome disciples and you're reading the word and you're diving into the word with prayer. And the scripture, and the scripture teaches you, doesn't mean we don't need pastors, teachers, apostles, all the other fivefold ministry. That is for the, for the lifting up and the edifying and the, and the bringing the fullness of Christ in the body of Christ. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, he's not going to be able to teach you when I say certain things because you need the spirit of truth to teach you. And he dwells in you. Amen? Amen. Number three, he brings to remembrance all things that Jesus said. Amen. Come on, lay hands on your head right now. <laughs> I do it every day. Jesus, help me to remember. Help me to remember scripture. Put it in my heart so that I don't ever forget it. But there's a promise right there. That's what the Holy Spirit's function is. That's what he does for you. He puts the Holy Spirit within you so you remember everything that he says to you. If he, if he speaks a, a word even outside the word, but his word will always line up with his word. 
if he speaks a word to you, a prophetic word to you, for you or for someone else, you're going to remember it. That's why the spirit of, of, of prophecy is subject to the prophet. That means you don't have to give it when you... We're all jumpy and nervous. Got to give the word now. No. Hold. Wait. Listen to the Lord. What's the Lord's timing? Anyway, that's a whole other thing. We can't go there. That's a shoot the rabbit. Number four. The Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus. I didn't read the scripture. John 14 26, sorry. But the Comforter, who is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So all the red letters and the black letters in the book, he's going to bring to your remembrance. Why? Because you read it and you were under the influence of the Holy Spirit when you read it. To receive it because he taught you it, number two. Right? Amen? And number four, he testifies of Jesus. John 15, 26. We just marinate right in John 15 and not leave. Right? But 15, 26 says, But when the Comforter comes, he will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, and he shall what? Speak of me, testify of me. So the Spirit is always going to talk about Jesus. Not about you. Okay? This is great, number five. He convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and, just, and judgment. So that's 16, John 16 Verse 8 says, when he comes, he will, he will prove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Right? And of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. And of judgment because the prince of this world is going to be judged. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay? Number six, he guides us in all truth. Verse, uh, chapter 16, we, we're not leaving John ever. John 16, 13 says, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Everyone say all. all. That means everything he, he wants to disclose and give to you and, and reveal to you, he will give it to you. Ask for it. And he'll give it to you. Or he may pull the Jesus card and say, you're not ready for that. And he's allowed to because he's God. Amen? But I think if we seek and we pursue and we ask, he opens up and he'll reveal things to us that we've not seen before because we desire to know him. How many want to know him in a deeper way? Wow. I want to know him in a... It, like, when we get in moments like this... See, I don't want to chase the Holy Spirit away because I get into my notes. I don't think I chase him away, but... Gosh, you know what? I feel like all of a sudden I go into unction and then I just, all that sensitivity. You know, the Lord loves stillness. I believe he loves stillness. He loves the sweet space, you know? That's why we worship extended. It's not that bad. It's only an hour. It feels like 10 minutes to me, honestly. Guess what? In heaven, it's going to be glorious. You're not only going to be learning as a disciple, you're going to be worshiping at the same time. Talk about multitasking in heaven. It's like you're going to be just, wow, glory. And then you're learning something. And God's revealing things to us. And so the Holy Spirit is like this. Like he wants to lead us into all truth, guide us in all truth, right? Did I just say that? Okay. Number seven, he's going to tell us things to come. That's John 16, 13. Right? He will show you things to come. John 16, 13. And then the Holy, Holy Spirit takes what is Jesus, what is from Jesus, and shows it to us. Amen? And that's John 16, what I was just saying, but 14 and 15 says, 
that he shall glorify me and he shall take what is mine and shall show it to you. Come on. He's going to glorify me. He's going to take what's mine and show it to you. And all things that the Father has are mine. Why? Because he and the Father are one. And the three are one. And you can dwell on that for the rest of the night and just let your heads go swirly again, you know. But he shall take what is mine and he shall show it to you. So somehow we wonder where does prophetic unction, where does the prophetic come from? It comes from this, right? Because the Holy Spirit dwells in us and he shows us things to come, amen? But number eight is he glorifies Jesus, and I just read that. He shall glorify me. And so how many know that the Holy Spirit's speaking today? You got all eight, right? So that's John 16, 14. He shall glorify me. And that's what we want to do as a body. That's what we want to do as a community. That's what we want to do today, day to day. It's not about making ourselves famous, right? It's not about making a ministry famous. It's not about, like, tooting our own horns on things. Though God wants to encourage us. He wants us to excel in things. But it is all glory to him. It all testifies of him. It, all glo- it should all glorify Jesus. Amen? And so I just want to speak a little bit about the Holy Spirit today. I, honestly, I was a little leery in, in running in the, in, the, in the lane that I was going to run in today, but I'm going to go for it. And I, I want us to just have a perspective, a prophetic perspective, because I've had encounters with the person of the Holy Spirit one time. And I can tell you he wants to reveal you, I, the person. Like not just sensing what I sense here, when I hear his voice, and I know he wants to do something, it was like the person of the Holy Spirit showed up in my room. Right? And when he did, he showed up with lightnings and fire and all kinds of wild stuff. And he told me things that I'm not going to tell you, because that's for me. But he did appear. He showed up. He, he made himself known in person. And you say, how does that work? He's spirit. Well, he's a person. And God can do whatever he wants to do. If he showed up to, to Moses in a burning bush and spoke out of a burning bush, he can do whatever he wants to do and reveal himself to us. And how many want the Holy Spirit to come into your room? Because this is what we should de- desire. How many want him to come into you and de- invade? Like, let's be possessed by something that's worth being possessed by. And it's him. Right? And so I just want you to go to Ezekiel 4, uh, excuse me, 1. Oh, we're going there, huh? Verses 4 through 14. We got 10 verses. I will just read, I guess. So why am I using this? Because I'm gonna, we're going to talk about these four living creatures. I'm just going to explain before I jump in. Because I believe that around the throne of is a reflection of all that God is. I believe that the four living creatures give us a depiction of what the Holy Spirit looks like. You're going to see why in a minute. Okay? It brings us characteristics and understanding of who the God person, the Holy Spirit is. Okay? I'm just going to use this because you'll see in a moment. Okay? Okay? Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 4, says, Then I look, and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with raging fire engulfing itself. And the brightness was all around it, and it was radiating out in the midst like the color of amber, and out of the midst of the fire. And also from within it came the likeness of the four living creatures. And there was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And each one had four faces. They had the likeness of a man. And each one had four faces. And each one had four wings. And their legs were straight, and the soles of their feet were like soles of calves' feet. And they sparkled like color of of burnished bronze. I'm reading from the New King James. And the hands, verse 8, the hands of a man were under the wings and on the four sides. And each had four faces and wings. 
uh, excuse me, each four had faces and wings. Their wings touched one another. The creatures did not turn when they went, but each one went straight forward. Verse 10, as the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man, and each four had the face of a lion on the right side. And each of the four had the face of an ox on the left side. And each of the four had the face of an eagle. Thus their faces, their wings stretched upwards. Two wings of each one touched one another. And two covered up their bodies. And each one went straight forward. And they went wherever the spirit wanted to go. How many know they were controlled by the Holy Spirit? And they did not turn when they went. Everyone okay? As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of torches going back and forth among the living creatures. The fire was bright, and out of the fire went lightning. And the living creatures ran back and forth in their appearance. In their appearance was like a flash of lightning. How many know there's a lot of fire, a lot of lightning? Yeah. How many know that the Holy Spirit moves in flashes of light and fire? We depict the Holy Spirit in fire. And so I just want to touch on a couple of things. So from within the fire came these creatures that their appearance was like burning coals their appearance of torches was going back and forth among them. The fire was bright, and out of it went lightning. I'm just reviewing to get us straight. And they went back and forth, and it was as the appearance of lightning. And so I'm not going to get into some strange teaching. Listen, just hold on, because people are like, where are you going? Where are you going? But I want you to look at some things, because the wings represent heavenly movement, which is the Holy Spirit which is God's spirit, and everything within the throne. Who's in the middle of the center? Jesus. And then we have burning lamps, and then we have burning beings. How many know it's all God? So the wings represent freedom of heavenly movement. How many want freedom in heavenly movement? You all need freedom in heavenly movement. You need freedom in your life to walk in heavenly places. If you're trying to wrap your mind around this, where I'm going, you better ask for the spirit of revelation because I'm not praying to help you, okay? In addition, ready? The hands rep represent strength and work of the spirit. Okay, so we've got a being with hands and wings and four heads. We're just going to get into the four in a minute here, okay? The face of an ox, speaking of priestly service, we'll get into that today. The face of an eagle, which speaks of the prophetic. The face of a king, or a lion, excuse me, lion king. <laughs> Kingly, Right? And then the face of a man which speaks of sonship. Okay, so each of these creatures, I'm just going to get through this, this stuff that I have written because it, it, it's, it's detrimental for your understanding, okay? So I want you to go and, and I want you to just hear me now. So these creatures represent aspects of Christ, Okay, we're like going, in, and, and we can go back and forth to Revelation. Revelation and Ezekiel speak of both the same encounters, right? You know, no one's confused yet. You're, everyone's okay, right? Yeah. All right, because if, if it's confusing you, it's not the Lord. I want confusion to be lost off of this place, all right? But the creatures rep represent four aspects of Jesus, Okay. The lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle. And all four of the, these aspects, Christ is supreme and Lord. So he's the king priest, right? He's the high priest. 
He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the prophet. And he is the Son of Man. He is the Son of God. And so are you. I said, so are you. You're not Jesus, but you are the sons of God. Amen. Am I right? Am I in the right room? Okay, I'm making sure. So the lion is the Lord, is the Lord Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords in Matthew. Ready? We're going to the four Gospels now because it's, there's a depiction. And it's, it's over and over in the Scriptures in these four ways. I'm intrigued, so I'm going there. Because I feel like we can receive something from this, okay? So the lion represents Matthew, which is described as, as, as he says, a king. Amen? And the ox is like Mark because he's a servant. The ox, which we're going to talk about today. Okay, and as a man, the Lord Jesus is a lover. Ah, come on. A friend, a companion, an associate, and a leader. As Luke describes him, a man like you and I. And if he hadn't come that way, we wouldn't be where we are. Okay, and as an eagle, which John's gospel is called the gospel, it's the eagle gospel. It's been, call, it's been called the eagle gospel for centuries. Okay? And so these four aspects of the Savior are revealed again in Ezekiel chapter 10, 14, and also Revelation 4, 6, and 7. Okay, so I want you to go put up the first slide. I asked Callie to help me. I want to show you these things. Okay, here we have the tribes of Israel. What does it look like? My gosh, it looks like the cross. We're going to talk about Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin today, which is the West. Okay? See these? But all the flags, the flag of Ephraim was the ox, because they're in front. Everyone say the front. The flag of Reuben, excuse me, the flag of Judah um, was the lion, and the flag of Reuben, oh gosh, I messed up on which was Dan and, and Reuben. But one is, one is the man, actually that's Reuben, and Dan is the prophet. Okay? So these are all flags. These are banners that they had. Yeah? Are you with me? Okay, all depicting these, three, these four things that we're talking about today. Okay. So the tribes of Issachar and Judah, here we go. I'm not going to read. I'm not going to read. Do this, all right. But I just want to talk about the strength of the ox. You can just put up the. Let them gaze at the golden ox here. Okay, graphics to distract you. Amen. But I just want to talk about the ox, and why it's super important, and how it depicts the Holy Spirit's movement in our lives. Every one of us need humility. And the ox represents a life of humility. A life of strength. A life of burden bearing. A life of intercession. And Proverbs 14, 4 says this, where there is no ox, the manger is clean. But abundant crops come by the strength of the ox. So how do, we, how do we function with the Holy Spirit and love God in, with all of our hearts and allow that, this, I will call it an anointing, but it's portionally, it's the Holy Spirit in your life. It's a, it's a characteristic of the Holy Spirit that comes in our lives. And it, we'll just call it humility and strength. Because God wants us to be filled with humility and strength. Listen, you can have power and no humility, and I believe partially God is like, when we get to heaven, we'll be judged on how we function in our gifts. If there's pride, 
How many know God wants to remove the pride? But in the same note, I say this, like God wants us to have the scriptures to hold us in accountability to where God is wanting to bring us. Ready? So like Brother Hagen used to say, right? We, if, we, if we focus, I shouldn't say this. It's, mm, be careful of my words. Be careful of my words. What happens if we become so focused on the letter of the law and scripture, we'll dry up. But if we, <laughs> Brother Hagen also said, if we get too focused on the spirit, we blow up. And God wants us to live in this tension of truly being students of the scriptures and the word, right? So like I just brought all these things out of one, out of Ezekiel. And and you're like, that's totally like outside outside the box. Guess what? God loves the color outside the box. And he always wants to bring us into, into an understanding of who he is in different ways. And guess what? The Holy Spirit is not bound to John 14 and John 16 and Acts. Okay? He's all throughout Scripture, just like Jesus is. Right? So I want us to... Because I say this because when I read this, this is what reminded me of my encounter with the Holy Spirit that day. When he spoke things to me. When he gave me promises. When he spoke things that I, don't, I, I had to repent because I don't believe them. Why? He came in like lightning. He literally came in in a lightning storm. And it lifted. And it was, there was literal fire in my room. Literal fire. It was so crazy. You know, a friend texted me about this encounter this week, and I'm like, I'm not, I don't know, Lord, if I'm going to share that again. And he was in, about this very encounter. And he said, Were you in, was it a vision or was it like live? Was it real? And I'm telling you, it wasn't a vision. It was live and in color. So I say that because, look, Ezekiel had it happen. It was a vision, or was it real? Was he in the spirit on the Lord's day? I think so. And so I want us to, and I say this in all humility, because God wants you to encounter him in a powerful way in your prayer closet. Guess what the prayer closet represents? Humility, being quiet. Because Jesus said, go in this place and shut the door. As a matter of fact, we talk a little too much about fasting. I know we do it for corporate fast, but you guess what we're supposed to do? Fast when no one knows. We're very explicit about the spiritual things that we do, and God is saying, listen, I want humility. I don't, you, you, your stuff doesn't need to be out all over um, the Instagram and TikTok and wherever else you want to put it. It doesn't need to be out there. And if it is, why? Why? I know I'm turning my back over here, sorry. Why? Let's get back to the barn. Because the manger, listen, when the Holy Spirit shows up, things get ugly. And I have to, listen, right here, I'm just going to talk about this place. I'm willing to allow the Lord to do whatever he wants to do, right? And Lord, help us. Help us to surrender. That's why I'm walking back and forth saying, God, help us. Help us. Because when he comes in in strength, listen, I'm not into the goofy stuff. I don't want to see this foolishness. Listen, but if it's God, I want it. If it's the Lord, I want it. I'm not into forcing people down on the ground. I'm not into any of that. If I push you, tell me. If anyone else pushes you, tell them. Yeah. I'm just saying, the Lord wants to do genuine things. And we don't want to settle for anything that's like any, has any resemblance of it not looking like really God. And so the Spirit of God, listen, in the, in the barn, in the ox stall, it's going to get messy. And I'm willing to be messy. Amen? 
So listen, Paul, you know, there's a barn's kept clean, right? Everything will be clean if there's no anointing. Everything will be wonderful. Yeah, maybe not. But if there's no, if there's no Holy Spirit movement, is everything going to be, you know, everyone's okay. I'm okay. It's calm in here. Yeah. This is the place, you know, I can, I can relax here. You know what I want to be able to do? Is be ready to allow the Holy Spirit to do whatever he has to do when he wants to do it. And I know we, you know, we just want him. We just want the genuine, right? And so simply put, look, Paul, uh, I'm going to read Deuteronomy 25, which states that an ox should not be muzzled, because Paul quoted this as well. But it says that an ox should not be muzzled while it treads out the grain. That means feed the Holy Ghost. Come on, give him what he wants. And it also talks about the harvesting operation, right? Simply put, when an ox is used, its, its harvesting operation should be allowed to partake of some of the harvest. Amen? So the strength and the labor and the, the, the humility of an ox is a representation of the, of the Holy Spirit anointing on your life. Listen. Holy Spirit wants us to be hard workers. He wants us to work. He wants us to work in the harvest, but not without him. You need him in the harvest. And so Holy Spirit gives us strength to pioneer and to make new roads in places where no people have gone before. That's why when you see people like, you know, we, we hear about these, these late greats, right? You hear about the ministry of Catherine Kuhlman. Well, you know what? The word was she was the, one of the hardest workers. She was a hard worker. And you wouldn't know it by getting on the stage because she'd get up there and then she'd just greet the Holy Spirit and don't, you know, speak about not grieving the Holy Spirit. And the wind of God would come in and miracles would just happen. It didn't happen by her laying hands on anyone. It happened because she would show up because she was filled with the presence of God. And she had people that prayed that the presence and the power and the anointing would show up in meetings. And God wants to do that today in every local church. Every local church. Because when that happens, guess what? People will come. Not because God needs our signs and wonders signs out front or our Instagrams. Here's the 25 people that got healed last week. And I'm not, listen, I got to be careful as well, right? Because it's okay, it's okay to testify of what Jesus does. But what's the, what's the means to the end so I can be, be an influencer? I don't know. I'll tell you who's an influencer. Jesus. And the Lord wants, you know, Gen Z's and Gen Y's and Gen X's. And what's the new one? Gen Alpha. Yeah, I guess so. We're back to A. We're back to A. He wants all our sacred cows. And every generation has sacred cows. Amen? Yeah, okay. How are we doing? God wants to release greater dimensions by the Holy Spirit, by us being humble and coming humbly before the Lord. I'm not even into the scriptures, man. Okay, so no one likes things messy. Amen? <laughs> Come on. Who likes things messy? My wife doesn't like a messy house. She doesn't want the shoes going through the house. Right? We don't like messes. I like things in order. I like things in order. 
But God sometimes says it's okay to color outside the lines and to allow this presence of God to come in however he wants to, right? So churches that don't function with the power of the Holy Spirit serve little or no threat to the kingdom of darkness. I'm just telling you, right? But once, once the Holy Spirit anointing comes on the scene, the power of darkness begins to react. So just, just a note for everyone in this room. If you're feeling pushback when you're trying to come here on a Sunday, that's why. No, seriously. Because people get sluggish, and I've heard people over and over tell me, I don't know, I just get like eh, melancholy before we come in at 3 o'clock or whatever. You just have the certain people in this place that are like crazy people that have an anointing for just, they just push through everything. We just have them lay hands on the rest of you. If it would work, I'd do it. But it doesn't work. No, seriously, why? Because just like, oh, I'll stop. I'm going down there. The Holy Spirit wants us to touch him, right? So our humble posture towards the Holy Spirit, towards the Spirit of God, births powerful moves of God. Humility will birth a powerful move of God in your life. I'm not talking about the greater church good. I'm talking about Jason's life. I'm talking about Lisa's life. It's powerful if we bring ourselves under the, right, submit yourselves to God. And he'll lift you up. Humble yourself before the Lord. And he'll fill you, right? James is really good about punching this thing. He said, listen, who get pride out of the way. You've got to be able to lay down before the Lord and get before him. Like today, I wanted to get down, but my, I was a mess anyway, so it didn't matter. Right? It doesn't matter if I'm up or down. If I'm crying the whole time, I'm good. Because when I feel the presence and sense the presence, I, even sitting there to Tori after, it's probably because of Tori. No, I'm just like, I feel like humming. Like, can you feel the presence of God when it's like that? Like every atom in your body wants to move. Why? Because your, your heart has been disregarded. You are humble. You are, you, every defense mechanism is down. And if every defense mechanism is up, guess what Holy Spirit gets? None of you. None of you. Oh, maybe a little bit. He can sneak in the side door because he is just over sneaky sometimes. But I'm telling you, he prefers us to be drop your hands and let him smack you in the mouth. <laughs> I know we don't like that. I like that personally. Knock me out, Jesus. Like, just put me out. And that's humility. It's like, go ahead, just do it, get it over with. But most of us are like resistant against what God wants to do. And humility postures the heart so that you can really allow the Holy Spirit to touch you. Because if you come in here all barred up and jammed up, it's like 25 people can lay hands on you and they still feel Brother Frigid Air. I know, I'm making fun, but it's true, right? It's true. It's like if we, don't give, if we don't give ourselves over to the Lord, submission, surrender comes through being humble. Yes. It's because everything's dropped. Like, Lord, just take us out. So, Scripture's rep- response to a, a comfortable, because I'm going to read this scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. You can go there in verse 8. But is, this is a response to the Corinthian church. The Corinthian church became prideful. They were kind of on the ease. They were a gifted church. They were, you know, they had it all going. Right? That's why they needed so much instruction. That's why Paul gave like two, two books and lots of chapters towards the Corinthian church. Because they needed a lot of help. Yet they felt they were entitled. Hmm, sounds like America. Sounds like the Western church, right? So a heart shift takes place after every believer, every one of us receives a fresh 
like blast of the Holy Spirit because everything's down. I put everything down so that you can come in, Jesus. And it just, dis- listen, if you just, dis- if you just dismantle every mechanism, you have to ask the Lord, Lord, help me to dismantle everything that gets in the way of you coming in and doing what you need to do because he really wants to do it. Ready? Okay. First Corinthians. We'll get there. Verse eight. I'm reading from, I believe the NLT. And it goes like this. Paul speaking to the church says, you think you already have everything you need. You think you are already rich. Sounds like Jesus speaking to a church in Laodicea. You have begun to reign in God's kingdom without us. He is the apostle of apostles. <laughs> he didn't even consider himself an apostle of apostles. But he says this, you're, you're, you're already ruling the kingdom without us. And I wish you were really reigning already. For then we would be reigning with you. Instead, I sometimes think God has put us apostles on display like prisoners of war at the end of the victor's parade. So there was this word that they used. It was called, the, it was uh, that word, uh, on display. And it's talking about theater. It's a Greek word for theater. Yes, theatrics. You put us on stage. And showed just, like the Lord put them on stage and showed their suffering, right? Condemned to die. We have become a spectacle to the entire world, to people and angels alike. Our dedication to Christ makes us look like fools, but you claim to be with us so wise in Christ. Excuse me, but you claim to be so wise in Christ. We are weak but you are so powerful. You are honored, but we're ridiculed. This is the Apostle Paul speaking as a father. Ready? Even now, we go hungry, thirsty, and we don't even have enough clothes to keep us warm. We're often beaten and, and have no home. We, we work wearily and with our own hands, earning, our own, earning a living. And we, we bless those who curse us, and we are patient with those who abuse us. We appeal gently when everything, excuse me, we appeal gently when evil things are said about us. Yet we're treated like the world's garbage, like everyone's trash, right up to this present moment. How, much, how, how, how many are feeling like they're good being a Corinthian right now? It's like a guilt trip letter. Ready? And then he says, I'm not writing these things to shame you, but to warn you. As my beloved children, for even if you have 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. For you become, for I have become your father in Christ Jesus when, you pre- when I preach the good news to you. So I urge you to imitate me. And he would go on to say later, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So here's the posture of Paul the Apostle. Who says, listen, you guys think you're already, you're already killing it. Like pride is, is, is something that's in your hearts. What am I saying tonight? Listen, God is wanting us to drain ourselves. I want you to leave encouraged by the end of all this. The Holy Spirit is coming to us to say, listen, posture your hearts in humility. Don't think that you know everything. Because he knows everything. And he knows where our hearts are at. Amen. And he said this, that he's coming as a spiritual father. And I'm not, listen, the Lord comes as father. The Lord comes as father to everyone in this room and says, listen, come to me. Come to me. So the place of prayer, come to the place of prayer. Why am I putting prayer in that place? Because prayer is like the the very... It's, it's the church activity that gets the least glory. I'm not talking about awaken house of prayer or any other house of prayer. I'm talking about our prayer lives in general. How does God come and invade your life when you yield yourself? How do I yield myself? I get before the Lord. Ready? Sounds just like last week's message. I get before the Lord and I open the scriptures. 
And I said, Jesus, Father, Abba, teach me today. Show me. I yield my heart to you. So come in and do what you need to do. Because I'm, because here's what happens. We're so engaged with every other thing around us. And again, I go back to these things that distract us. You're pulled in distractions. YouTube's your biggest distraction. Social media is most people's biggest distraction. If you're listening to, to nightly news every day or you know, the TV's going on 24-7, you need deliverance from that. Do you believe in deliverance? Yeah, I believe people need to be set free. We need to focus on Jesus. Amen? Why? So we come as Paul says right here, as children, my perfect entry. Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. Because he wants to give us the yoke. We're talking about the oxen. We're talking about strength. And I have this picture. I should have put it up. Gosh. I have it in my phone. Someone gave me a picture where, I, where I've been. It's from Cape Ann. It's from the old granite days. They were carting 21 yoke of oxen, moving one piece of granite across town to put as a, as a step at the Baptist church. 21 yoke. That's 21 times two. That's 42 oxen pulling a stone. Come on, slow and steady win the race. Slow and steady wins the race. We're all looking for quick fixes. Come on, somebody. We're looking for, like, lay your hands on me and I'll be set free. Oh, I'm going to go there. We're looking for, like, okay, I've got spiritual problems and I just need you to lay hands on me and it'll go away. That's a cop-out. Because there's nowhere in the New Testament that anyone has a demon, has, has, is delivered, gets exercised from a demon in the New Testament that's a believer. Did you miss that? There is no one, no believer, not one believer. You find it for me, you can bring it to me. Not one believer that has a demon that is exercised out of them in the New Testament. We'll go here later, not today. Because we think of this, we want instant. So I just need deliverance. And God's looking for disciples. Discipleship, right? So if you're a disciple, then you're given over to the reading of the scriptures and prayer. Ready? Prayer. Back to the hidden place. Ready? I'm going to go under the yoke of Jesus. I'm going to put us under a yoke of Jesus. Because like, I'll do like my daughter told me the other day. I'll just say it. Jesus seems to not be enough for us. The church is looking for something else. No, it hit me. It hit me hard. It's the truth. We're looking for something else. We need a little bling. We need a little glam. We need something. It'll help us. Help me get my, through my thing. No, God just says, come to me. He's, we're going to him right now. Matthew chapter 11, 20, 25. It says, at this time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and have revealed them to babes. All we have to do is come to the Lord like children. Innocence. Innocence receives from heaven. Innocence receives, because I posture my heart, right? Even so, Father, for it so seemed, seemed good in your sight, all things have been delivered to you Excuse me, all things have been delivered to you, to me, excuse me, by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one whom the Son wills to reveal him. Verse 28. 
super important. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. Oh, what did oxen use? Yokes. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to yoke up with Jesus today. Like we're going to yoke up with the Lord because when we yoke up with the Lord, something begins to happen. He carries the load that I don't need to carry. He takes what I'm trying to carry up the hill. By the way, oxen pull better uphill. How many like running uphill? How many like resistance? Come on, resistance training. We're starting next week down in the basement. Let's go. Seriously, who likes resistance? I hate it. I just want to run. Just don't make me run uphill. I just want to run. Right? So the Lord is like, here, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Because I'm gentle and lowly of heart. Oh, there's that hum- humility thing again. So who is Jesus? He had a yoke. <laughs> he has a yoke that we're going to connect to, right? Because it takes two. So when we walk with the Lord, we yoke to the Lord. And when you yoke to the Lord, all these other things, right? I, yo- I yoke myself with him. I pray with him. Oh, my gosh. Revelation, he's the best prayer partner in the earth. No, if you, get, if you get with Jesus in the prayer closet, you'll be free from everything. If I give my life to the Lord in prayer and in his scriptures, because he's in both, because the yoke of the Lord's on the word and the yoke of the Lord is in prayer, then I will be free. Why do Christians need deliverance? Because we usually don't do those two things. Do it for one year. I promise you, you'll be free. Commit yourself to prayer and reading of the scriptures. You'll be free. Daily, not whimsically. Daily. Like, this is my life. This is my bread. This, this thing is, this is my bread. This is my life. Every answer to my life is right here. Not in the hottest thing that's being peddled on Oh, I got to stop, right? I love y'all. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. That's what I want. I want a light burden. So Philippians chapter 2, here we go. Verse 7 says, instead he gave, he gave up divine privileges. This is Jesus' trade. <laughs> He gave up divine privileges and he took a humble position of a slave yes. and was born as a human being. So he's calling me. <laughs> Guess what? Oh, humanity was a downgrade for the Lord. You know it? How many know that? Yes. Oh, come on. This, because we lose, we miss the whole thing if we don't understand that he came out of heaven. And became a man, born of a virgin, as an infant, as a child, harmless in humility, and was raised so that you could be free. Amen? Instead, right, he gave up his divine privileges. That's the New Living Translation. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Literally, that's it. Cursed. Remember last week. Curse is the one who hangs on the cross. Well, the curse is broken off your life. God's broken curses off your life just because he, he died on the cross as a curse. And if we could get a revolution, a, 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 a revelation of that, we'd be, it would be revolutionary for our lives. Do we understand that? Like it's more, the gospel is power. The word of God is power. The gospel of God is power that sets you free from everything that's holding you in any type of captivity. 
And the Holy Spirit's anointing for that is the only thing that will help you. Holy Ghost, help us. Therefore, God elevated him to the highest place of honor and gave him the name above every name, that the name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow and every uh, in heaven and on earth and under earth. So hell bows to it. The earth bows to it. It's his name. And listen, Paul said this. He said, my grace is sufficient for you because in my weakness, in my weakness, I'm made strong. So what is it? It's about our, ourselves coming to the understanding that I am at the end of me so he can fully take over. Can I tell you we're at an impasse until we get there? I'm, no, really? We don't think this is truth, but all scripture tells us, listen, this is it. The kingdom life comes through this. You give yourself wholly to my word. You give yourself wholly to prayer. Fully, wholly, wholly, fully. I give myself to those things. And Paul said this again in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 and 10. I just said, my grace is sufficient for you because my power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, rather I will boast most gladly in my weakness in order that the power of Christ may reside in me. I don't know about the rest of you, but I need the power of Christ to reside in me. I need his power to reside in my life. And it's not because I'm in the vocation of ministry. See, God wants to take the thing that gets in the way. And literally, really, I feel like it's, the, it's our will. And I'll just say it because I'm not going to mix words, Okay. Any place where there's rebellion in our hearts, where we push against the word of God. Listen, this is not, this is not put a heavy yoke on anyone. We're taking Jesus' yoke. But we have to come to an understanding that there is, like where it says in scriptures, if there's, if there's rebellion stored up in the heart of a child, right, the broader discipline will, will, will get it out of them, right? What I'm saying is the word can be used to bring discipline to my life. Because when the Father talks to me and he, he's, he disciplines me because I'm a son. Yes. Right? So the Holy Spirit wants to come in that place of, listen, I want this in you. I want you to move like an oxen. I want you to move like I moved. I, had the, I could pull anything. Jesus pulled the whole thing. Think of it. If I think about the yoke of Christ, he was able in, in, one, in 33 years to break the power of sin and death over the entire planet. And we, and we get stuck. I can't get through my stuff. It's 20, 30, 40 years. God says, humble yourself. Drop everything that gets in the way and allow me to come in. So that, listen, this is the key. This is the very key to the, let the anointing of God power through your life. It's when I come with humility before the Lord. Like, I don't know anything. Like, even what I knew yesterday, I come before the scriptures again today because there can be a streak of rebellion inside of us. It's that enmity of God. I'm not saying we're not saved, but there's places that don't, we don't want to res- give over to the Lord. Yeah? Am I talking to the right crowd? It's just me, right? There's places that God is trying to get and we just know. That doesn't line up. No, if it's in the word, it's, it's the Lord. And humility releases power. When, I, when you don't see, like when the person that receives the fresh anointing on their lives, it's because they've yielded. 
It's because they've yielded. And this yielded thing is the Holy Spirit. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. What grieves the Holy Spirit? When I resist him. When I resist the, the, the pulling, the wooing, when he wants something, me to give, like release something to him. That's the place where God says, listen, here, here you are. You're at a moment right now where my strength is going to be made perfect in your weakness, in the place where you don't know what to do, you don't know how to do it. Good. Because we're all trying to figure it out. How do I get here to here? And God says, give it over. Not that you don't want, listen, when you're, when, let me just say this. When you move and you give yourself in humility, then you hear the voice clear. When you give up, you begin to hear the voice of God clear. When you try to figure it out, believe me, I promise you, when I'm trying to figure it out, all I can hear is me. When I'm trying to figure out how do I, how does this, how do I get free from this? It's me. It's not a demon. I didn't know why I was going to demons tonight. But I feel like we try to blame everything on spiritual stuff when most of it's us. Right? I'm not saying people don't have strongholds. I'm not saying, don't, don't. Don't say things that I'm not saying in your head. There are strongholds in people's lives. There are things that we trip over. There are continuous cycles, no doubt. But it's, it will not be remedied until I humble myself. I give myself completely over to the process of God. What is the process of God? I don't really think I have another message. I yoke myself to Jesus. I give myself to the Lord. I completely surrender to, it, to my life to him. Because what we do is we try to work everything so it works in our favor. I'm looking for the path of least resistance so that I can get free. Yeah? I I don't want pain. (laughs) I don't want to look at the cold, hard truth sometimes. But the Lord wants us to move in a place where he comes and he, he identifies things and you respond. I'm saying he. Why am I going back to this? It's a review because all of a sudden I realized that conviction has become a bad word. I just read it earlier. The the Holy Spirit came to bring conviction. And when we feel convicted, we feel icky. Like I need to be clean. Yes, you do. So give it over. No, No, but all of a sudden it's become like that's no, no, it's not in vogue. It's church anymore. Like it, we can't have messy altars. The Lord is trying to bring the altar back to the church, so that revival will actually pour out. But we want we, we tend, tend to look like for something that's going to stimulate us, so that we have a moment of, of of freedom. Yet we don't carry out the freedom. And I'm not saying. Listen again. Don't say what I'm not. Don't say what I'm not saying. I'm saying I think there are moments where people can get, all of a sudden the anointing comes because you're at a moment where there's, God is about to rifle something on you and free you from something. But you have to take take this up. Put on your armor. We will go there. In another series, sometime. sometime. Because we just pass by the armor of God like it's nothing. Like, oh, it's a good Sunday school thing. No, no. It says when we, when we walk in the armor of God, it takes care of all the strategies. All. All. All the strategies. It's, in Greek, it's all. It's everything. All the strategies of the enemy. Everything. That means if I belt myself with truth, if I have a shield of faith, not hyper faith, faith. If I use this sword of the spirit, because this is the only weapon you have. Jesus in, in Luke chapter 4, and, and it's the weapon that he faced the devil with was this. Yes, sir. 
And we think we're going to do it on what's trending on YouTube. No, I'm serious, man. If the culture needs to... I wish I could stick a fork in it and make it done. But it's just... I'm not saying there's good, not good stuff out there either. But we get on these tangents and looking for things that are going to free us. And God's saying, listen, here we go. The anointing's going to break the yoke. The Holy Spirit's going to break the yoke. How do I receive the Holy Spirit? They waited for 10 days. Humble. Waiting. He said he's coming. We're waiting. Three days go by. Remind, think of stories from like A.A. Allen. I'm going into the closet till the power hits. One hour later, he's knocking on the door, wanting to get out. Been here too long. No, God wants us in the closet. Humility. Because I'm yielded. I give myself to him. All right, let's stand up. I'm, so, I'm ranting. <laughs> Well, we're going to ask, right? We're going to ask the Lord now. Stand with me. Come on. Activate. Activate, activate. Some people in the room, you need to ask the Lord right now. God, posture my heart in humility. Ready? That's what everyone wants to run to the altar for. Posh my heart in humility so that you can do what you need to do inside of me. Right? So really, let's, let's just ask. We're just going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord. How about we just do it corporately tonight? Ready? Lord, I thank you for all you've done tonight. Your goodness, your mercy, your strength, your power. We just ask Spirit of God. We humble ourselves, Lord. We ask that the strength of, of an ox that can pull 30 ton stone uphill would be in our spiritual legs. That you do that, Jesus. That our hearts would continue to yield to you, God. Every place, Father, that we fall off the side and move out of rhythm with you, we're asking that your yoke would come. We'd yoke ourselves with you, Jesus. We would yoke ourselves with you. Your burden is easy. Your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. We thank you, Father, for the power that comes from on high. Commit right now. If you're serious, just agree with me. We commit right now for the power of prayer to just be manifested in our lives. That I would not look for quick fixes, although you could fix anything in a moment. You can touch and shift anything in a moment. So I pray that, Father, in this house, God, we posture our hearts in prayer. Remove every rebellious thing in our hearts. It's okay. You can ask him. Lord, remove the rebellious thing in our hearts that cause us to push against and walk in pride not hear your voice we thank you Father that our heart posture and humility
hears your voice. My sheep know my voice. We won't follow after another. We won't follow after another because we hear your voice. We thank you, Lord, that it's by your life. You gave your life so that we walk in freedom. Everything would be removed. So, Lord, I speak strength. Speak strength and stamina to every person in this room that we would learn to step under your yoke and walk with you. And when we walk with you, sometimes the walk isn't too easy. It's not easy sometimes. We come to that reality. We come to that fullness and understanding. It's not easy sometimes. But when we're connected to you, when we're yoked with you, ask Holy Spirit that you put the fire of prayer in our lives right now and that the word of God would burn in our hearts as you begin to break open the word for us that it would burn in our hearts Jesus let it be a revelation inside of us let it be something that would bring pure life to us Jesus bring us in bring us in newness of life.